Last week, New York Post Giants beat writer Paul Schwartz gave us his mock draft 1.0, and now it's time for the remix. Paul's on to talk about his mock draft 2.0 with just over two weeks left into the NFL draft. All right, Paul, uh, thanks for hopping on with this, man. You ready to do this? 2.0, right. Um, it's twice as good as 1.0, I guess. Look, as, as I mentioned last week when we did this, this is not the definitive. This is what the Giants will do. Um, it, it's not fun or interesting if I pick the same four or five or six guys every mock draft, right? So I like to change it up a little bit, uh, you know, change positions. And then once I hone in and get closer, the mock draft 4.0, which will come out, I think, the day before the real actual draft, um, will be as close as I think I can get to predicting what's going to happen. So um, I'm not saying we have to take this with a grain of salt, but um, – you know, let's not let's not go too crazy with the mock drafts. They're fun. They're yep. fun. People yep. love talking about these. So things. let's have some fun with this one, man. Because in your first mock draft, you had the Giants grabbing Washington Huskies receiver Roma Dunze. Now, in your mock draft 2.0, the Giants select who at number six? Well, this will <laughs> this will if this happens next. Uh, you know, uh, Thursday night, the uh, the 25th. This will send Giants Nation into. Um, um, shockwaves, uh, happiness, sadness, throwing, you know, throwing remotes, all that stuff. Um, at number six, I take um, Michigan quarterback J.J. McCarthy in mock draft 2.0. Now, let's let's see who's on the board here. Right, Brandon, that's yep. important um, um, in this in this simulation. Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels and Drake May are all gone. Bang, bang, bang. One, two, three. OK, I'm not putting any trades in this mock draft. I am well aware that the Vikings are another team could trade up to four or five and maybe take J.J. McCarthy. I'm not doing that here. So um, also gone other than those three quarterbacks was Marvin Harrison Jr. And uh, the edge rusher, Dallas Turner. OK, mm -hmm. that was this simulation. So the Giants have their pick of, um, you know, neighbors, the great receiver from LSU. Odunze, who I had in the first mock, uh, uh, Joe Alt, a terrific uh, offensive tackle prospect from Notre Dame. But. I go with J.J. McCarthy, and um, it will be a polarizing pick. There's no question. Um, huge winner in college, right? 27-1 uh, at Michigan, 15-0 last year, won a national championship. Um, great guy, intangibles off the charts. Um, but will he be a great quarterback in the NFL? I mean, no one can answer that question. He's the youngest of all these prospects, Brandon. He is 21 years old, so there is room to develop. He's young. Right. He's really young. So you can draft him and Daniel Jones can start all or most of this year coming up. If Daniel Jones gets hurt or something happens, you could put Drew Locke in there. They signed him. J.J. McCarthy can have a red shirt year in the NFL, grow, acclimate. Um, he's a big winner. People wonder, can he make those special throws outside the numbers? You know, um, he also he threw the ball, Brandon, as a former receiver. I know you'll cringe at this. 713 times in three years at Michigan. That is, you know, some of these other quarterbacks are cl closing in on almost 2,000 throws. So um, they didn't throw the ball. They went 15-0. and 0. You can't fault them for that. But um, J.J. McCarthy is an um, interesting prospect. I think this is a bit high for him at number six. But um, someone's going to take him pretty high, I think. Real quick, Paul, because I know this was just a simulation, but I know you have ties within the, the franchise do you think that this is just hype when it comes to this kid, or do you think the Giants could actually be interested in drafting him with the sixth pick? Like I said, I think this is a bit high, but um, I think they like him. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think they like him. You know, what, you know what I think, Brandon? I think a couple of months ago during this process when it was just starting to crank up, the Giants looked at J.J. McCarthy and said, I think this could be true. Maybe we can get this guy in the second round. You know, maybe we can get a receiver, get a player, get this guy in the second round, maybe trade up into the first round. Um, you know, he doesn't have the numbers, but he's an interesting prospect. We can, you know, draft him and stash him, and we can see what happens with Daniel. Okay. All and right. um, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, as you know what happens all the time with these quarterbacks, chatter, 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 hearing, hearing, you hear things, and all of a sudden, teams are falling over themselves to move up to get these guys. So um, I think moving up to get J.J. McCarthy is a real, real um, shot in the dark that could make or break a GM's career. I really do. because yeah. uh, He just doesn't have the proven track record other than being a great winner in college. A lot of guys have been great. You know, you know um, A.J. McCarron was a great winner in college. 
Colt McCoy was a great winner in college. So I'm not saying he's them, but, you know, there's extenuating circumstances. Daniel Jones was under 500 at Duke, okay? Yeah. You're right. <laughs> You're right. Paul drop, dropping gems. All right, let's move to the second day. Uh, rounds two and three, last mock draft. It was Michael Penix Jr. in the second round and defensive tackle Chris Jenkins in the third. Who do they take in your 2.0? I think this will be your favorite pick, right? I think you knowing you, knowing you, you're all offense all the time. Uh, <laughs> you think running backs and handing the ball off is kind of like a necessary evil to getting the ball down the field, right? Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, that's why you don't like Michigan, right? They, they ran the ball too much. Um, uh, Troy Franklin, wide receiver, Oregon, uh, second pick, uh, second round pick in, in this draft for the Giants. Um, they need a, a number one target. I don't know if this guy is quite that yet. Um, they, they would pass up in this scenario. They would pass up those number one prospects in round one. But there's a lot to like about Troy Franklin. Uh, 6'2", 176. He's got good size. 81 catches last year, averaged 17 yards a catch. That's really good. His 25 career touchdowns at Oregon is a school record. Think Jalen Hyatt, sort of, with this guy. Not quite as explosive, similar body type, but probably more polished as a route runner coming out of college than Hyatt was. And we saw last year, Brandon, as much as we all love Jalen Hyatt, he needs work on his route tree development there's no mm -hmm. question he can run straight and run fast but he needs work on those other things which is exactly what was said about him and made him a third round pick uh last year so so troy franklin and i think in the third round now we address a need whenever i make these picks people always say to me what about cornerback what about offensive mm -hmm. line i think max melton from rutgers if he's there at the 70th pick he makes total sense local guy um Eight interceptions in college. He he has a nose for the ball. He can play inside. He can play outside. He can play on the perimeter. You know, he, he's, he's got enough um, muscle to play on the inside if they, you need him there. And, oh, by the way, they drafted Deontay Banks last year, right? Mm -hmm. Adoree Jackson is not on this roster anymore. Who is the other starting quarterback? Now, if they draft Max Melton, I'm not saying it's definitely him. You need to put some talent into that mix here. Uh, Cordell Flott, uh, is he an outside cornerback as a starter? Uh, Darnay Holmes, they uh, they re-signed. He's not an outside corner. And uh, Trey Hawkins last year at this time was about to be drafted by the Giants and won a starting job and quickly gave it back. Yep. I'm not turning my back on Trey Hawkins, but um, he needs to show more. And he, he um, you know, can he be in the running for a starting job this year? Maybe. But Max Melton fills a need and um, totally value pick totally makes sense at uh, 70 overall he is worth that there's no question about it well i love tony franklin like you said almost 6'3 and he's a yards after catch guy he can go up he plays above the rim and that's exactly what the giants offense needs especially in the red zone someone who goes up there you could just throw it up there in terms of max melton we've we've covered him we watched him all throughout the year the guy is a ball bully he likes to play he goes up for the high points of the ball and he does what a lot of dbs can't do he catches is the rock that's why he had so many interceptions as opposed to guys who just get a lot of pass breakups one name for that cb2 job that remember lawrence tines when we do uh blue rush podcast he loves nick mcleod but either way there's they have to address that cb2 especially when you got guys like uh uh, uh cd lamb and aj brown and devonta smith terry mclaurin in the nfc east uh, there's only three picks on the final day of the draft. Who do you got for the fourth, fifth, and sixth round picks this time around in the 2.0? Okay, uh, fourth round defensive tackle, Dwayne Carter from Duke. Um, you know, 300-pounder. Uh, a, a Sean Robinson is no longer with the team. You need these big guys in the middle. You need um, rotation pieces. Um, Dwayne Carter can be one of those. Three-time team captain at Duke. Uh, no one has ever... Uh, had that claim of being a three-time captain at that school. Um, he's got 12 sacks in, in college, so he has a little bit of pass rush. So I think he makes sense there in the uh, fourth round. Fifth round, I think you're going to like this one, even though, um, as we said, you like receivers over running backs, um, but you like offense. Running back Dylan Johnson of Washington, um, 200 and almost 20 pounds. He's a thumper. He can he – can, um, uh, 16 touchdowns this past year. He was at the Mississippi State for three years. You know, was fine, but he really, really blossomed at Washington. Uh, almost 1,200 yards, as I said, 16 touchdowns. Physical inside runner. You know, Saquon Barkley's not there anymore. Giants signed 
Devin Singletary to start in running back. But after that, Brandon, you tell me. You know, Eric Gray coming off a, uh, a rough rookie year, Gary Brightwell, Jay Sean Corbin. There is a gaping hole for running back two there, and um, a rookie like Dylan Johnson could fill it. Um, sixth round, I go with Ryan Watts, a cornerback from Texas. Now you say, wait a second, two, two cornerbacks, you know, a third round and sixth round. Well, you know what? I'm not keeping Ryan Watts at cornerback. I'm turning him into a safety. Um, a lot of scouts feel that, you know, he's got great size, 6'3", uh, 210 pounds, maybe not a great coverage guy. Is he going to be able to cover in the NFL as a corner? Okay, maybe, but probably not. Move him to safety. He hits, he tackles, and you know what? He will be, and you know this, this was near and dear to your heart, right? He can be a core special teamer maybe right away. You know what I mean? While he learns, um, Xavier McKinney is no longer on this team. There is there's um, openings at safety. Uh, Ryan Watts can can be a converted corner. There's nothing wrong with being a converted corner at safety, right. and you can cover well for a safety. Also hit like a safety, and oh by the way, get a uniform on Sundays or Thursdays or Mondays or whenever the heck they play nowadays. Um, get a, get a jersey because you're going to be on special teams. So uh, makes sense in the sixth round. Saw guys like Dane Belton and Nick McLeod get opportunities on defense for making plays on special teams. Uh, special teams lead the way. Uh, Paul, see you next week for 3.0 of the mock draft. I may put um, uh, your. How old's your son, Brandon? How old's uh, your son now? 11, 11 months. 11 months. That's too. And uh, I, 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 he's, got, he's got eligibility left. He's not making my 3.0. Maybe. Um, you know what? Let, let's make a deal. Let's keep doing these mock draft videos until your son's ready, okay? And then right. we'll, we'll, I'll put him in there. Yeah. First round, first round only, Paul. Second round grade, I, don't, I might have to unfollow. Well, <laughs> hey, you, you did fine for yourself, and you weren't in those rounds, you know, so uh -huh. let's, let's, let, let's get him to his first birthday first. Then we'll worry about mocking him, right? <laughs> yeah, thanks, Paul, for hopping on with this. You got it.